we go. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming back on. Dude. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah. No problem. Man. Yeah, man. It, it was our, our last one was one of the first, the last ones I did in, uh, in person. And look oh, at us yeah. now. Before, I know. <laughs> do you yeah. prefer it over, over zoom or do you prefer it in person? It's easier over zoom. Um, just cause I could connect with different people and stuff, but I do, I do like that, the in-person interaction thing, but I, I'm supposed yeah. to be doing one in person coming up here soon. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, but yeah, Got it. but as of right now, it's working out fine. You know? Yeah. 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 I, I know you, you had a podcast going on the lollipop connection, man. I did. I, I stopped it cause of COVID yeah. and I just didn't, f- I don't know for, to me, the whole, the the fun part was doing it in person and being at lollipop and I like doing it live. So it was live streaming. So it kind of put the pressure on a little bit, I think in a good way. So, and I miss all that. I don't know if I could, you know, do that through zoom necessarily, but I mean, I, I, I can't and look at us now. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, man. But I mean, you, you, you've been super busy. I mean, since our, since our last, our last meeting here. Uh, trying to be yeah yeah man yeah. definitely that's, busier than before that's great though right yeah fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry anyways, i'm not allowed to cuss on this um, on this podcast you can say where the <laughs> heck you want dude <laughs> okay yeah man uh what was your first job that you ever had first one my first job that i ever had um like a real real deal job or you talking like high school part-time job type thing let's let's start with high school part-time uh high school part-time job i the first thing i did was uh i was a camp counselor like a summer camp counselor um which was interesting and and fun um i also taught drums when i was in high school at this music school place it's still around um and I was, so I was teaching drums there and then I was doing like camp counselor type shit during the summer, which was basically like a full-time job. Um, that was kind of my high school work experience right there. You're wearing a lot of hats back then, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, it was just stuff that was came to me. I didn't, luckily I didn't have to look very hard. You know, my, my friend was teaching guitar at this music school and, they needed a drum teacher. So I was teaching drums there. And it was the same with the camp counselor thing. My friend was working for this camp and the pay was really good. I was, you know, like 16 or something. And it's just the right, it was, it just worked out really well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, it, man, it sounds like you're just falling into a lot of different uh, I, uh, possibilities, opportunities there. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun for sure. Yeah. What was your first car? First car was a Honda Element. Very nice, very nice. What what, yeah. what year? What what year Honda Element? Oh fuck, one of the first ones. I don't know when it came out. I got it in two thousand. I was seventeen, I think. It must have been two thousand nine, and I think the car was it was used. So I'm guessing two thousand four, two thousand five. It's pretty I new. Think. Pretty new. Yeah. Yeah. I was lucky. And actually my friend had a hookup with the Honda element, um, with the Honda dealership. And that's kind of how it happened. And so. You should go ways around everything. Don't you, man? It turned around. Well, what's weird is like where I grew up, there's this strip of car dealerships, basically all the major brands. And so I weirdly knew either it was like my friend's dad or my friend's cousin worked at one of those places and one of them was honda and so they, they hooked it up really fast um and i drove that car until about three or four years ago so it really didn't last it uh, lasted a fucking <laughs> i the, dude i drove that thing through the canadian mountains up in montreal and it's been to new york like 10 times um that thing's been I, I, that yeah i drove that thing to the ground so, so I mean, I mean that's that's like, a, like a, across the country, li- quite literally. Yeah, I mean the first tours we I ever went on with my band, we used that car to tour in um, because it you could pull the seats out, um, and, we, and I had a roof rack so we could tie shit up to the roof. 
and it was great. Thing was killer. So, so what was was the final nail in the coffin for that thing? It just stopped one day. It just, I wouldn't even start. I had it towed to a, the Honda dealership that I bought it from, and they're just like, "Yeah, this thing's, it's not even worth fixing at this point." It just so. smoked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm surprised it lasted that long. Um, but it was a sad goodbye. I mean, I drove that thing for about 10 years, about a full decade in that car. That's a good chunk. What was the mileage on it when you got rid of it? I don't, I don't remember. It was high. It was high up there. I think yeah, in the yeah. 200,000 zone. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, Which man. is good, yeah. It, it's, it's a good, there's a good chunk of miles there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I still... I. I don't know why they, they discontinued that car. I see them around why. quite often. I feel like though, you know, for a discontinued car, it's, it's yeah, prevalent. they're around. They're around. I wish they, they made them. I would, cons- I mean, I would buy, I would get another one if I could Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, what are you driving now? Um, I have this old, it's an MG, uh, it's a super old car that I've been driving. Um, I bought it semi-broken and i kind of wanted to get into cars so I was, oh, this is chill i bought it for 1500 bucks and uh it, you know i ended up being way over my head uh, and i had to spend more money than i thought to get it fixed i did some of the stuff myself trying to figure shit out um but now it's running great and it's fun it's, just, it's an mg 1979 uh two-seater is it that dark green one that I, that I, that I still? Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Very nice. Driving around, taking the yeah, place of the elements. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, different beast. Definitely a different beast. Uh, so what was, it's fun. But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it looks like it, man. It's, it's a nice sporty car. That's what you need right now, right? Well, I just don't, I mean, I don't really play. I don't play in bands anymore. I don't lug gear around anymore. Um it's such a tiny car. The gas mileage is crazy, crazy good. And it's just fun to drive. I, I don't like driving for the most part. So if I can at least have a little bit of fun when I hop in the back, you know, in the front seat, then it makes it a little more worthwhile. Sure. How old are you when you got your first, I, I mean, I mean, not, not your first car, but rather uh, your license. How old are you? 16, 17? Yeah, I got it right when I could, right when I could. Right 15 16 whatever it was i yeah, did not yeah. wait i just wanted i wanted that freedom so bad yeah and did you take full advantage of it do, do you feel looking back on it yeah yeah i think i probably took it too far but it was it was worth it for sure were you were you generally a good kid i mean like you like you know relatively yeah uh yeah i mean i wasn't a stellar student i wasn't you know top of my class in terms of academics but i i was an average i passed all my classes graduated high school it, you know i i was kind of a stereotypical stoner kid in high school i made it by squeezed by smoked a lot of weed kind of goofed off with my friends jammed surfed you know that was interested in philosophy and art and making records and going on surf trips and shit like that that was kind of my my bag back then it was a lot a lot less neurotic and a lot more uh just low-key like to have a good time type of guy in high school no drama you know it was it was mellow i had had the same girlfriend all through high school um yeah it was a very I, i yeah i have nothing to complain about yeah, cause, cause cause where, where, yeah where'd you grow up what was was, what was it? it's in orange county right yeah so if you know where dana point is sure yeah yeah the dana, that's where i grew up in a point very nice yep. yeah <laughs> i yeah. mean it's changed it's changed a lot in the 90s it was it was a bit different um but it was it's always been a very nice kind of weirdly secluded area because it's not really close to anything so it was it was a charmed charmed life for sure I, i'm very lucky definitely yeah yeah what uh when was the first time you smoked weed how old were you uh shit i was four, 14 i want to say high Around school that age. yeah yeah i was like freshman high school 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the time to do it, right? Yeah, it was like right going into high school. I was when I started messing with that shit. Did you get high the first time you smoked weed? No, I did not. The second I time though it was it's yeah the second time yeah, yeah, yeah which was you know a few days after that. <laughs> <laughs> Was but, it was it yeah. you that got into it, or was it your friends that were like, "Oh, hey, we're we're uh, we're getting into this"? It was. What's really funny is, uh, I, so when I the, the high school I went to at the time, I think it's probably a lot bigger now, but back then it was there. It was pretty small, and there wasn't really a, a music. There was a music department, you know, like there was marching bands and all that shit, but it was very small, and um, I was wanted to be in jazz band because I was just into that shit. And these older kids that were seniors at the time when I was a freshman were in a really cool band that I, I just thought they were like the coolest, you know? And they all smoked weed. They were in jazz bands and I was in jazz band with them. And they, I just wanted to, you know, fit in, be cool, try shit out. And so I think it was, you know, stereotypical i just kind of wanted to try it because these people that i thought were really cool were doing it um and then i ended up really liking it so then i just got into it myself but that that's what spurred it for sure yeah yeah, yeah. did you uh were you a drinker when you were younger as well uh not really I mean, when, when i was younger I, I didn't really like drinking too much i always felt sick um but later on like i stopped smoking weed after high school and then I drank a lot, a lot more and I got more into drinking and then I just got over both, but it kind of went from smoking weed into drinking into just not really doing anything. So it's just a straight edge. You're straight edge or you're straight edge now. I'm straight edge now, I guess, but uh, you know, not, not because I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm not anti-drug or anti-recreational, you know, fun. None of that. I just, it just doesn't do anything for me. You just listen to a lot of minor threat and you're like, these guys, they're on the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. That's I get high just listening to that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's that's it's for suckers, everything else. <laughs> uh, I wish I enjoyed it, honestly. I just I I never I just started not feeling well every yeah. time I'd smoke or drink. I just felt sick and I was like, ah, I'm gonna try not doing this. And then so yeah, I feel better. Yeah, how how long have you been doing that for? How, how long have you been on that kick of like just not doing anything? Uh, I stopped drinking about five six years ago, and so I just really—I mean, I'll have a beer now, now and then. I'll have a glass of wine now and then, but I don't—I don't drink, drink, you know, and I don't smoke or do anything like that. And it's—it's it's just been so long. I don't know. I just. I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't excite me or do anything for me. Life is fucking trippy enough. I'm already, you know, tripping balls, just being alive and trying to get through the day, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you remember the first show you played? First show I played. Uh, the very first shit. show. Uh, yeah, actually it was high, the high school um, battle of the bands. That's what it was. Man, I didn't realize this podcast would be so much about my high school, but that's cool. Dude, yeah, the, it's high school about all the bands. The first time we kind of did like more recent stuff. Now we're, we're, we're taking a step back now. And yeah. then uh, the next time you're on, we're going to do future things. That's what we're going to do. It's all. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I just feel like, uh, like, <laughs> like, like my first time doing shit is the most stereotypical you know, it's like, yeah, my first show was Battle of the Bands in high school. That's what people want to hear, though, dude. Uh, <laughs> That's what they came here they for. Wanna, they want to. They want to hear like, oh, I played in the a dirty cave with coked addicts in San Francisco. That you know, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know, but yeah, it was Battle of the Bands in high school, and I was. It was really fun. I was nervous as hell. Were you, were you glad you did it yeah. afterwards? Yeah, it was super fun. It was. It was super fun. Do you feel like that sparked like, oh, I, I want to do this more? and definitely at the time yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah but you know man i mean you, you, you say that all this stuff is just like uh just kind of stereotypical stories you, you got any off off the beaten path stories of, of that time like what you were doing in high school did you ever get into some crazy shit mm, in high school i didn't really get into crazy shit until like until i moved out and like went to la and 
dropped out of college and that that's when shit started getting wacky. Uh, but, but high school teenage years, I mean, the craziest shit would be like, you know, paddling out and it's like eight foot waves and I'm, I'm high off my, like stoned off my ass and my, my friends and I are just giggling and fucking scared for our lives. You know, that, that was about the, the height of crazy shit I did as a teenager. It's still pretty um, fucking crazy, man. It was fun. I mean, it was just this weird thing. We would just get high and go surfing and either we'd have a great time and giggle or we would be just scared for our lives. And uh, both are good. Yeah. Both are good in their own, in their own way. <laughs> so I didn't, you know, I mean, that's about the extent. I didn't really do anything that crazy. You know, did you move directly out of your parents' house to LA? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 And, and you, and you went to school. I remember we talked about that before. Yeah, I <clears throat> I got offered like a really great scholarship to this this music school and I did go for about six months and then I just didn't like it and I dropped out and I just moved to LA essentially. Was it wasn't located in LA though, the school? It was in Pasadena, which is I guess it's outside of LA. Yeah. So in the the confines of the county though, I guess. Yeah, I just, you know, Pasadena at the time, I was like, oh, I want to, uh, you know, I was in a band. The, the really cool spot back then was Silver Lake. So I was, we couldn't afford Silver Lake. So we found this really old, shitty house in Echo Park that was super cheap at the time. And uh, we just, the whole band moved into that house and we just kind of gave it our all. And it worked out, man. I mean, it got you to a, where you are now. I don't know if it worked out. I mean, it was it was fun, and it was a big learning experience for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good memories. Um, but so, so yeah. when you when you say crazy shit started to happen after you uh, left school, what, what what kind of crazy shit was was going around on on around you rather? Uh, more like you know, let's get in the car and just drive across the country and play shows without any money and in the element which will just yeah and the element <laughs> um and we all thought at the time like the first tour mr elevator tour we ever went on was um in the winter which we didn't think that you know the country is fucked in the winter you go up into you know new england and the midwest we didn't think anything you know we we're just like oh it's chill let's just go you know our friends got us all these shows and we went with no money and we were peddling for money at gas stations that's how we got we were getting around is just like begging for money at at gas stations uh, like, we're a band we're on tour and we don't we're trying to get to the show can you help um you know just silly shit like that eating you know all sleeping in the element together in kansas city it's like zero degrees and we're like huddled in a circle together to keep warm because we couldn't afford to stay anywhere else no one no one would put us up uh yeah just it was just fucking shit tons of stories like that more of just kind of getting into shit not realizing what you got yourself into yeah and how old, um, uh, old are you at the time like uh 1920 yeah 1920 something like that i had so, a fake id luckily back then so i was able to get in everywhere and, and was it was it a good one no it was horrible it didn't look like me at all but somehow it worked i never got turned down was it a reason. real a real id that yeah was yeah okay. it was my friend it was my older friend had to get a new uh license for some reason and he just gave me his other one and it didn't expire until almost days apart from when I actually turned 21. So I just used it. I should have kept, should have held on to it, but I don't, I don't know what happened to it. But yeah, yeah, it worked yeah. great. <laughs> it, it was, a, it was California ID as well. Yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. And and you, you never got it taken once. It never got, it never got uh, taken by a balancer or nothing. No. Nah. Nothing. Good. Not even, not even like a weird look or anything. You're, you're lucky you're lucky man that, that that happens i know i am yeah i'm very i'm lucky yeah but i was so uh in my own world i i, 
you know, I didn't even think of what could happen if I got in trouble. I was just like, ah, fuck it. Sure. So I think the the ignorance and confidence was high enough to where people were probably like, yeah, I guess this is the guy. Uh, you, you were the guy for sure, man. Being the guy, <laughs> dude. Everyone wants to be the guy, the guy. in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you still in contact with that guy now? Whoever. Oh, no, I'm not. Right? I'm not. I don't. I don't know what happened to him. That's a really good question. Though. He was a good good friend in high school. I don't know yeah. what the fuck happened to him. <laughs> So uh, what what was what were some other jobs after after the the summer camp and uh, teaching drums? Did you have more conventional jobs? Uh, so yeah, so after that, right when I moved to LA, which is kind of shitty, I ended up getting a job in Orange County for the city. It was like a city job, um, kind of just working around the park, city parks, um, which was a cool. It was actually a pretty cool gig, and I did that for a while. Um, and then basically what ended up happening, I fucking hated my boss, um, the lady who ran that place. I just, I, I really hated her. Um, I had this weird angsty, just, I didn't want to work for her anymore. And so, um, I ended up getting hired by the YMCA to be an assistant teacher. I, sorry, one second. Let me, yeah. So I ended up getting hired by the That's YMCA. Her. That's her. She's calling right now, right? I know, right? Yeah, she knows. She's 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 bugged me this whole time. Yeah. Um, she's still trying uh, to win you sucked, back, man. She, she sucked so bad, and I I love everybody, and I don't. And she's you know I don't hate her or anything, but at the time I really was just like, she was just she would call me names and tell me I'm not gonna go anywhere in life. This classic, you know. Anyways, I ended up getting a job at the YMCA and being an assistant teacher for a while after that, which was even better um and that was actually a really fun job and the only reason why i quit is just the band started getting too busy and i was ending up luckily being able to to make rent and do all that with the band and i just i just stopped um i just stopped doing it now did you stop going or did you tell her like hey i'm, I'm done. Oh, i just told yeah i told her like I, you know i can't i'm gonna be gone for three months like i just don't know how this is gonna work you know and so i just stopped and luckily I have not had a, well, I did, I, when I lived in Arizona, I was teaching music, um, but I didn't have, I haven't really had a real job since then, luckily. I mean, I've just been doing lollipop and freelancing and music stuff, and luckily I've been able to get by. That's great, so. man. When did you start to see like uh, lollipop being, being something like, uh, like I it was like, oh, this is a real thing. Now it's not just like a, a project. It's a real business kind of thing. Like we're actually making money off of this and, and or whatever success is to you. Um, we've never really made money. That's the thing. Even to this day, we're, we're barely scraping by. But the moment that I, there's a few moments that made me realize this is probably worth my time and worth, worth doing. Uh, one, we we put this album out um, for a band called Adult Books. That's probably the first indicator. It was just a cassette tape. It was a very simple release, and it did really well. I mean, it was it was crazy having to package orders and having to make more tapes because we're selling out and shipping them to Japan and Spain and all around the country. That just sparked an initial you know, this is cool. I should keep doing this. This is a good thing. I'm helping my friends music get out there. It's stuff that I love. It's stuff I think is great. Why not do this? Why not put more time into this? This is obviously, it's not like people aren't buying it, you know, or people aren't wanting to listen to it. And that was, that was an initial first thing. And it just, it snowballed after that into, you know, doing more records, trying out different ideas. We did a show called Lollipalooza that was really fun. And it was the first time we had like a really big event and, and sold it out. And that was another indicator of like, okay, something's working. I think let's, let's keep it the ball rolling, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just snowballed ever since then. You yeah. know, now it's, it's more of a, a, I hate to say the word lifestyle, but it's, I, you know, it's beyond I've already dedicated everything I have to it. So I just, I just breathe and eat and shit lollipop all day. 
it's like its own world. Um, so. So walk me through like your mindset when you're releasing a new album or, uh, or song or artist to the label, like what is going through your mind during that, during that day that you release it? Like, this is the drop day for this band that we just signed. What's, what's going through your mind? Well, there's a few different things. One, and that this one's hard for, for a lot of artists, artists to understand. And it's hard for me too. I still go against it when I put my own music out. Cause I just don't give a shit but you have to kind of give it time like when you when you're done with the song you're done with an album it takes and right now we're telling our bands like four to six weeks for us to one try and maybe find a publicist that likes it try and find an outlet for it try and pitch it to spotify um get it into our distro make the tapes you know there's a lot of little moving parts that go into it so it even when something's done it's going to take a month maybe two months you know, for, for it to be released. Um, so there's that, that aspect of it that people don't really realize. And then the gearing just, up um, for it, right? Like just gearing up. Yeah. It's, it's a whole, yeah. yeah. The preparation is, it's a thing. It's kind of cumbersome and, and shitty. Uh, but you know what I mean? Cause it's like, I just have this song it's done. Let's put it out. I'm ready. It's we we're trying to do, be a little more suave, I guess, and, and try and get it to as many people as possible. So there's that consideration and there's a lot, man. Some, a lot of the bands we're doing right now, we, we produce in house. So it's not like we're just getting records that are already ready to put out. We're signing a band and saying, Hey, I want to like, let's make a record from scratch and let's put it out and let's do all of it from, from the start. So it's just, it's a lot, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, a lot of effort. I mean, I, it, it's Definitely. on all ends of it: the preparation, the post-release, the actual producing of the record, and getting it sounding right, and you know, making sure everyone's stoked on the way it sounds. Artwork, music videos, TikToks. I mean, it's just like it's an endless, endless thing. So the, the, I mean, and there's always new, new stuff coming into it, new parts coming in every. I mean, like the TikTok thing. I mean, you, that's not something that you prepare for. I mean, even with the yeah. first release of the of the first tape that you did, I mean, it's not, it wasn't Oh, around. it's so different. It's so different. I mean, what yeah. Instagram was barely around at that point, correct? I mean, like when you first put out the Yeah, back then tape. it was just Facebook. Yeah, it was just Facebook. That was it. And I remember when Instagram did come around, I was pretty against it. I mean, at the time I was like, fuck Instagram, this is, <laughs> it's too fast and you can't really you know people aren't really going to read what you have to say because i was really into writing big things on facebook about the release and the album that was my way of promoting it but eventually you know i caved and i'm just it, i'm to the point where it doesn't matter what it is i just believe in the music and i'll do anything to get it in front of people sure sure yeah. so what, what what do you look for when you're when you're when you're shopping around or not even shopping around but you come across a, a band that sticks out to you and you want to put it on the label what what do you is there a certain key aspects you're looking for or is it just like this sounds good to me two there's really only two things that that interest me one either it's so unique that i can't put my finger on it i've never heard anything like it before um and i keep going back to it there's that end of it and then there's the end of it where it freakishly reminds me of something that i love and it's done so well and it encapsulates such a um an energy such, such a sonic kind of landscape that i keep coming back to it because it feels good and it's maybe it's nostalgia it could be throwback could be anything but those are kind of the two you know i either gravitate towards one or the other and that's what gets me going on a, on an artist it's good. It's good. So there's there's some there's something that you've heard before or something that you haven't heard at all. It's basically the two things. Yeah, two I just try. Yeah, just, I don't. I'm, I don't get too excited uh, by like middle of the road type stuff. Not to be, yeah, yeah. you know, not not that that's bad. But name for... a few. Name name some artists right now. <laughs> <laughs> middle of the road. Put some put some faces uh, to that. Well, yeah, everyone's middle of the road is different. You know, for for me, it's it's got to be pretty fucking off the wall if, if you're going to go towards the unique end of it it's got to be pretty off the wall you know um for, for me to get excited and then 
the other end of it, if it if you if it's supposed to sound like something and feel like something, if, if someone nails that, it's really amazing too. So yeah, for me it's it's kind of those two. But luckily the label is not just me anymore. You know, I, I have a business partner who you know is, is into slightly different music than me and we, we kind of it's a cool we kind of bounce a lot of shit off of each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that it's really nice to have a different difference of a kind of thought on on music. It's like, yeah, this this does sound good, even though this is not what you're looking for. This is what this is what people enjoy. Yeah, definitely. Because there's yeah, some yeah. shit that I like that, you know, my partner's like, this is insane, dude. Like, no, no, this is never gonna happen. I'm like, all right. And it's the same, you know, it's vice versa type thing. So sure. Do you feel like your inspirations? musically have changed over the years yeah oh yeah for sure yeah yeah so i mean they're they're always changing yeah yeah so uh, as of right now as of i mean 134 today what's uh what are you into right now they that you were Uh, in let's say 10 years ago you wouldn't even think about looking towards um, inspiration really into 80s funk music like parliament funkadelic the time um gap bands like that kind of shit really into that very kind nice early 80s straight funky ass shit i've been into that a lot lately so would, never, would, yeah, yeah would, you, would you have been listening to that in i mean t- 2011 10 years ago uh honestly probably but i probably wouldn't have i've always been really into everything seriously um i don't know if i would have uh attached I don't know if I would have given it the attention that I've given it now, but I probably would have still fucked with it back then. But back, back then I was really into sixties psych music. So, you know, it, it's, it's like kind of morphed as I've I've gone through like these different stages of what I'm really into. Yeah. yeah. Back then I would have listened to it and been like, yeah, this is chill. And then I would have put like some, you know, sixties psych shit on after that. Yeah. Yeah. When, when do you feel the most inspired to make music yourself? Um, boredom is a really, is really inspiring to me. I don't know why, but when, if I ever get a moment where I'm bored and I don't know what to do with myself, typically I find inspiration in that. Um, something about being removed from things inspires me a lot. At the same token, you know, like also stereotypical, but going through shit and having a lot to deal with emotionally and, and stuff that that's also inspiring. It's very like hot and cold with me. It's either like I'm inspired because I have nothing else to do and I'm bored and I just can sit and just basically musically jerk off and see what makes me feel good. Or I'm, I'm like so wrapped up in my own head that it morphs into uh, some sort of song or lyrical idea or melody or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense yeah yeah no I'm, I'm i'm with you i'm following you i'm i'm here for it's it. hard to yeah. be inspired when you're just you know i'm you know on my routine but, going know, through the motions going or... to going to work and you know it's like that's very uninspiring but give me three days without my cell phone and cut off all communication to the world and i'll probably make an album in three days yeah, you know, yeah. so it's it, it, you know did you um because i i know that we've talked about before that you uh, spent some time in arizona out there and i mean and i think recently you, you had said that you have a lot of just demos and whatnot from that time that you spent out there it was like a year right yeah i was out there for a year and a half yeah and uh, I mean, with, with, with all these ideas that you've had out there, do you feel like it was just a change of pace that brought it to you? Or what was, what was kind yeah, of the, the root of that? Yeah, so the last time I was, bored out of, I was bored out of my mind. Oh. I was living in the woods, didn't know anybody. I had the space, luckily, because it's so much cheaper out there. I had a great room to make music in with all my gear. And, you know, it was just my cat, Twilly, by the way. Good. Yeah, I'm, I, I need the appearance. This happened recently on another, <laughs> on another interview with um, Misha from Sad Girl. His, uh, oh, cool. His cat had came in. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I, I welcome it. I welcome the cameos. Nice. They, they like the camera. I feel like they, they like the action, you know? 
good. They're not shy about it. No, you know, this is <laughs> this is what really happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you wait? Did you yeah. did you have uh, these cats in in Arizona as well, or did it? Did you acquire I have, them? Well, I, this cat uh, truly I've had for six years now. He's been through everything with me, but I have another cat that I just got recently that is a few months old. Um, he's in the other room, but very nice. He's, he's new, new to the fam. Yeah. Could you have uh, perceived um, the the path that Lollipop has taken over these years from starting it in what 2012 ish, give or take, right to yeah, yeah. 2021? I mean, could could no, you, no. I mean, it's just no crazy, right? Yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah. It's definitely not. I could have never expected it or guessed that it would have been gone this way at all knowing what you know now about like what you would have to go through and even in the future if you're able to see that would you have still gone through with it th- with this idea with this plan in 2012 yeah, no, doubt, no doubt no doubt in my mind yeah i probably would, would have done some yeah. things differently but but um yeah i feel really really lucky to just be able to keep chipping away at this idea essentially it's just an idea it's like yeah, a, yeah. I, it's like a square ice block of an idea, and I've just been like trying to chip it into something, and it's it's fun. So it gets me up in the morning, you know. It's really fun. I I wouldn't have it any other way. Hopefully, I can chip it into something that people can enjoy, and we'll see. You know. Do you feel that you're doing that right now? Um, it's hard to tell because it's such a small and niche kind of thing. I feel like it's it's providing something great to the world, especially in, in this like local area that we live in. But, you know, I don't, I don't know past that. It's hard for me to tell cause I'm too, I'm too close to it. You know, I'm too, I try and just not even think that way. I don't know. I just try and just chip, just keep chipping away. Right. 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 Um, would, would Lollipop be different if you hadn't started it when you started it in 2012 ish? Uh, era would we be looking at different kind uh, of, uh, uh, product right now well the way i would say fundamentally it'd be exactly the same and attitude wise and kind of how we go about putting records out and signing bands none of that would change but i think our approach would have completely changed if we would have started it in the last you know three four years oh sure yeah <laughs> you know the approach and just how yeah how how we present albums how we communicate all that would be very different um but fundamentally no i don't don't think it would change at all the the core would not change it's still the same yeah the core would not change at all good good yeah keep the scene alive etc etc yeah i mean it's more like i try and when i try and explain to somebody that doesn't uh hasn't had any sort of involvement with lollipop or anything it's just it's like putting the power back in the artist's hands it's more like we are working for our artists the artists aren't working for us that's great man that is that is great to hear yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna just let my cat out really quick please please it's it's important i i I hate (laughs) doing it i hate opening it up for the cats i hate shutting it because the cats don't close the doors it's it's real issue yeah yeah (laughs) But that's just what you have to live with, yeah. When when you started uh, performing live, who was like, who were some contemporary artists at the time that you were under the same bill as? Like it'd be you or like Mr. Elevator and and who else? Uh, there was a few bands. There wasn't a ton of when we first started out. There wasn't a ton of like psychedelic music going on. There was a lot more garage rock, punk rock type stuff that was really popular. And so it was hard for us to find bands to play with, especially in Orange County when we were where we were from when we were just starting, like right at end of high school. I mean, we really fucking didn't know anybody. Um, a big reason why I moved to LA is because there were some bands in LA that were doing what we were doing, and we ended up going up there so much to play, and it was such a better, more lively kind of scene. But uh, some of the bands, like Jeff Bertitti's Nile was one band that we played with a lot back then. There's a band called Buffalo Electric. 
There was a band um, called Feeding People that we play with a lot. Um, the Growlers is kind of the quintessential band at the time because they were the only ones kind of doing a psychedelic thing. And in Dana and, Point, too. Well, yeah, and then even in, in, when we moved to LA, they were still doing that, and so it was cool to kind of play with them. And they had their kind of thing. All Allahs was another band. Um, Never heard of them. There's a right. there's a band called Crooked Cowboy back then that was one of the most insane psychedelic shows I've, I've ever been to in my life. I have no idea what happened to them. Um, but they were freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a band called the Cosmonauts that were kind of doing a, a psych thing. And, you know, there's a handful of, you, you, I'm sure you've heard of some of those bands. They're just low, you know. Sure, sure. So those are kind of the bands we would play with back then. Um, do, you, do you have a, a personal favorite song that you've made from your discography? Like that really stands out to you? That's a touchy one because I don't really like my music, and it's I, like I don't. I, when I hear it, I cringe. You know, it's like I hear this one thing I should have done differently. I hear this one change that could have been better. And so I'm definitely not like um, self confident in my my music. In terms of my favorite song, uh. That's a hard question. I mean, there, there was a song, there, there was an album I made with my friend that we collaborated on. Um, it's, it's called The Broken Hearts. And there's a song on that album called Tomorrow Night that may be one of my favorite songs I've ever made with somebody just because it was so um, pure and, and, and almost childlike. And I haven't experienced making a song like that since I was playing like battle of the bands or something where it's just so natural and pure and fun um so that that song is one of the only ones i'll go back to and just listen to more because it's nostalgic for me to put myself where i was when i was with my friend making that whole album actually is is really was really fun to make that song sticks out to me though when did that uh, album come out uh 2017 pretty 2017. sure so maybe 2018 uh, i forget it's one of those years it's like yeah. maybe three or four years ago so when when you work on music now just mm -hmm. under wyatt blair your your own name yeah. is it self self-titled stuff is it just you that's working on it or do you bounce ideas off of other people or what how does that go about well so it's always been it, unfortunately it's always just been me alone in my room making music um up until i made that album the broken hearts album with my friend uh, that inspired me to want to do more shit with people. Um, and so this album I just came out with was my way of trying to make an album that was completely collaborative. So yeah, the songs are my songs and, and I wrote all the music, but with the singing and even all, some of the songs of the lyrics um, are all from different people that I really just like. I'm just fans of pe these people that I had on the album. They were gracious enough to to sing and, and co-write and be a part of it. That's so awesome. It was, that was really fun. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, and of course, you're referring to Big, which is the newest the newest album, right? Yeah, that one's all, yeah. Every yeah. every song, I don't sing a word. Oh, I sing like a word on this album, but 95% of it's, I don't sing it's, on it It's all. probably too much, man, that one word. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit overbearing there, dude. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I tried to auto-tune it out so you can't tell it's me. But uh, I, I yeah, know it's... I know now. So <laughs> yeah, secrets out. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> what? Where, where, yeah. Where did the idea for the uh, for the title come from? Why Why do you want to call it fake? Uh, because I it, I was just trying to do something different. I thought like everyone coins my music as like throwbacky and and I guess I just get coined a certain way and people refer to me as a certain way and I was like, well. I just want to make a like a modern pop album, at least in my style. I can, you know, I still, you know, there's like 80s and 90s influences in there, but I just wanted to make a modern sounding record in my my interpretation of a modern album. And I just thought big was a funny name to call a modern pop. Like I wanted to go big, you know, everything big. And the theory is, you know, my next album is gonna be called Even Bigger. And, I think and you're like, gonna go reverse, like small, but no, no, it just... no, no. It's gonna keep getting bigger, and so 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll see. But so it's just kind of a weird concept. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you happy with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad it's out. No. How do you, yeah? How do you feel after you release like I mean even like Banana Cream Dream and like Point of No Return? How do you, do you still feel the same way about releasing stuff as you did then? No, different because back then I was touring and it meant more merch to sell at shows, which meant I was able to afford touring more. It was a totally different. I, I was more. It was more of like a full circle thing when i put an album out um now it's more of just pleasure just pure i put this out because for no other reason than just putting it out because it was fun to make and i could give a shit you know sure. how well it does um so that that's changed but the feeling is always the same it always feels good it's almost like a weight off your shoulders or something when an album's out yeah yeah like you like i've been gearing up for this and now it's finally here and it's it's done yeah yeah it feels good what uh, what was the last show that you played when was it oh fuck last show that i played the last show i played was actually with my dad's band they asked me to fill in for them that was probably three years ago that's tight dude and so that was that was fun that, that was probably the last show i played how, how did how was it received how, was it well received yeah, it was fucking super fun. Yeah, it was great. I was That's really nervous, killer. you know. It's like I can't fuck this up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but it was fun, and yeah, I mean, it's that was yeah probably the last show it was three years ago. Why is Thin Lizzy so important to you? Uh, I just think they encapsulate everything I love about rock music. They don't give a fuck. I think he was technically the first rapper of all time. People don't want to say that, but he really was the first person to spit poetry on top of music. Um, they kind of forged their own sound where at the time was pretty obscure doing like twin harmonizing guitar solos. And it was like metal, but pop metal. And it was psychedelic and his lyrics are, they, they just hit me. They hit me hard. Um, Does that just, just encapsulate a, everything that you want to do within music? Yeah, essentially, they they already did like they're the epitome of what I think is beautiful about music in general, but even more so rock and roll music. I just think that they're they just epitomize that, you know. Definitely. What's what's the best concert you attended? Best concert I attended. You know, I saw uh, the first one that comes to mind. I, I don't know if it's the best. I'd have to really think about that because collectively speaking, like there's been so many bests. Um, they're so different from each other. But I was at a random festival, very small DIY music festival in Irvine. This was like 2009. And I was walking by this little stage with this band playing. Um, and I just, it blew my fucking mind. Like I was literally, my jaw was on the ground watching them play, both me and my friend at the time. And we didn't know who they were. And I just went up to them. I was like, what, who are you guys? Like, what's your name? Can I buy your, your CDs? At the time it was like tapes and CDs. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're Toro we moi. Like this is our first time in California, all this shit. And so, yeah, it was Toro we moi, which at the time was like, Toro what? Like, I don't know who the fuck these guys are. They blew my freaking mind. I still remember that day vividly. I remember like what I was wearing. In Irvine. What my friend was wearing. I remember it was like this grass. They were playing into like a grassy field. Yeah, it was in Irvine. Irvine Lakes. Okay, yeah. All right. It was like some weird one-off like DIY two-stage festival daytime thing. It's tight. And it just blew my mind. So still, I did one of the best live bands I've ever seen. I mean, seriously mind-blowing. Very odd. Very, very, very different. Yeah, I mean, I've, it's. I don't even know how they. I don't know what they were doing, but they were doing something good, something right. <laughs> that's cool, man. That is. That's. That is really rad. But listen, man, I like to wrap this up with some promo, and we got a lot of things to promote here, dude. All right. 
at per usual, which is fucking fantastic. And if, if anybody can go support Lollipop, I mean, please do. I mean, they're, I mean, you do great stuff over there, Wyatt. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's Thanks, great. Man. I appreciate it a lot. You, you got a lot of stuff going on there. And uh, I tell everybody the first time that we um, did this, I mean, I, I, I didn't really know you. I mean, we don't really know each other that well, but I really didn't know you back then. I, I'd only seen you a handful of times at a, a couple different places and then you were just so nice to me and then uh, we were at i mean i'm assuming you're at the studio right now the place is fucking huge but <laughs> it was just it was it was just so nice so i mean if, if anybody's got some some spare chunk of change go spend it at, at lollipop and i appreciate that man thank you, can, you yeah you can find all of the artists uh and their merch at lollipop and this is l-o-l i p o p not not two l's yeah <laughs> so there's not three l's there's only two l's l o l i p o p records.com that's that's where that's where people could find all the dis- discography and, and and look back and current releases older releases it's all good it's all it's all great stuff and that's where the people can find big right that's where the people that's should true, find yeah. big yeah that's true yeah got the cassettes there i saw earlier that's true yeah yeah. And um, it, as well as your your older releases as well, which is I highly yeah, everything, recommend. Everything I've ever done, it's all everything is lollipop. Yeah, go there, go there to find it, and the people can keep up on what's going on at uh, Lollipop Records uh, on on Instagram, right? And that's L O L I P O P Records, no underscore. Yeah. On Instagram, yeah. definitely. Is there is there anything else we got to promote before we we wrap up here? Nah, just thanks for having me, man. Dude, thank you for coming back really on, man. It. Yeah, I, 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 I look forward for, for the third time too. That's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. Definitely. And if I if I ever get this the podcast going, I'd love to interview you. You know, I'm around, switch man. The, switch the. Yeah, the yeah. Narrative. It ain't. It's a, it, it ain't gonna go well. No, I'm just kidding, man. Dude, thank you so much, Wyatt. Um, <laughs> go support Lollipop. Course, I appreciate it, bud. And I'll I'll talk to you in a second. All right.